What's up guys? So it's time to make some tie rods. Uh, all the parts are slowly trickling in and I'll show you guys what I have here. Uh, one of them actually just fell to the ground. So this is what I've got. Let me take this out of the bag and I'll show you guys. So this is the inner tie rod for I believe a Honda Odyssey or some Accord or something like that. Basically it's a uh, the same inner thread pitch, the M16 by 1.5 uh, inner rack thread pitch. It's the shortest one I could buy um, that Moog had on their site. And it's a M14 by 1.5 outer thread pitch here. Total length of this whole entire thing, including the section that screws into the rack is six, in six point something inches. Then I think I've showed you guys in a previous video, I have heim joints. So these are a 5 8 18 left hand thread heim joint. So I had the inside and I had the outside and you know the next part that I needed was the middle. So this is the middle. Um, I have these DOM steel tube. It is one inch outer diameter, quarter inch wall, half inch uh, inner diameter hole. And this stuff, it's a little heavy, but will do the trick to make me some tie rods. So what I have in, what I'm intending to do here is thread the inside hole to be this thread pitch, threads the outside hole to be this thread pitch. One of my taps came yesterday, the left hand thread, five eighths tap. Um, so that'll thread this side once I drill the hole out. Um, to fit the thread, I have to drill it a little bit bigger. This hole, this half inch hole should be good for the M14, I believe. That tap comes tomorrow. So this is gonna be a multi-day video here. And I bought this in a two foot section from Speedy Metals or something like that. And I just cut it down. I didn't have a vise. So I got this old Craftsman vise from my grandfather's garage a while back and I never bolted it to the bench. Um, so I took one of my track tables and I bolted it to it. Just drilled some holes in the plastic table and uh, it seems to be working. So I cut it with the Sawzall. My cut was pretty straight at first, but then I kind of angled up a little bit. So right now I'm just taking a file and filing this thing down straight. And then once that's done, it will be ready for me to kind of just drill into it with uh, the proper size drill bit, which I still need to locate the proper size drill bit for the 5 8 guy here. Um, once the M14 thread comes in tomorrow, I think this half inch hole might be the right size. So um, I'll play with that a little bit probably tomorrow. But for right now, I'm just gonna get this thing filed down and get it flat and uh, we'll have some inner tie rod tubes here made. I wasn't expecting on working on this tonight because I was still waiting on parts and stuff to come, but here's, I'll show you what I've got so far here. So excuse my mess, but I'm working upside down. This is upside down here. This is the bottom of the knuckle. This is the top of the knuckle. This is what I'll be doing. So I uh, masked up, gloved up, went and got the rest of the hardware that I needed and the drill bits that I needed. Um, so this is basically what the end link setup is gonna look like. It is the Heim joint, the 5 8 Heim joint. I got a 5 8 uh, thickness grade eight bolt. I have the offset spacers or the, whatever they're called, the, so I can get more, you know, articulation out of it. Uh, I have a 5 8 steel spacer here. This is a one and a half inch spacer. I also have one inch spacers. I'm not gonna know how long I'm gonna have to drop this down to be parallel until it's on the car. And then just a washer and a bolt here. So this is all kind of just mocked up. And what this will do is allow me to get my tie rod parallel with the control arm so it's no longer on an angle upward. It'll space the point here down and uh, that's that. So then I had that two foot rod the other day. I cut them down into quarter or half, wow. Cut it in half to 12 inch long pieces and I am drilling a 9 16ths, I think, hole um, to thread the um, tap in, the left-handed tap for the inners or the outers. And I don't have, the other tap was supposed to get here today for the other side, but it's not here. So right now I just drilled the hole um, for this using an electric drill and the vise and being very careful as to make sure it's going down straight. And I'm almost to the point where I will be able to now uh, tap the hole and ultimately thread this guy onto that guy. 
And um, I'm not sure if this is gonna be the length that I need. Um, I think I'm gonna have to shorten this down, but I really won't know until it's on the car. I also drilled this hole out to 5 8 because like I said, it was tapered just to test it on here. And I'm going to have to uh, drill the hole out on the two knuckles on the car in order to run this on those knuckles as well. All right, so I got the other side, the other rod um, drilled and tapped. Thank God for the $8.99 eBay taps. This guy is mocked up on the hub there. We're ready to go. Um, I know I'm not gonna need the full 12 inches that these rods have right now. So the next move, and it's, you know, th like I said, this is gonna be a multi-day video, but the next move is gonna be getting this Honda Odyssey or cord inner tie rod onto the car. Then I'm gonna have to drill out the knuckles like I did on that one to fit the 5 8 Husky 5 8 bolt. And then take some measurements, mount this to the knuckle, mount that onto the car, and kind of figure out uh, how long I need this bar to be to get the alignment within spec. What I'm gonna do is make it so that it is more towed out um, because then lengthening this bar, like unscrewing it and lengthening it out will give me more toe in because on the 3000s, it is a rear mounted um, rack. So the more you push out, the more that wheel toes in. So that's gonna be the next move. All right guys, so I'm back out here. It's another day doing a little compare and contrasting of the stock tie rod that I just pulled out of the car. Now this has already been shortened a little bit from um, the old setup and now I need it lengthened. So this isn't actually true to the stock length. I think we can maybe cut like three quarters of an inch of threads off of here to get it to align right. Um, so just to compare in length, that is what we're looking at as far as the rod here. Additionally to that, here's what the uh, new inner, inner inner looks like. I also had the Villains rack spacer, eighth inch rack spacer on here. So I'm just gonna slide that onto the new guy. I'm gonna put just a little tiny dab of uh, red Loctite on here and get it screwed into the rack. So here I had the little dab of Loctite. Let me get that guy threaded on in there. I used the electric drill and drilled this hole out to be uh, 5 eighths. Just gonna get this tightened in. Just hand tight, just so I see where it's gonna fall and um, yeah so this is how it's gonna look in here we got the bump steer drop spacer so ultimately when this is all hooked up the tie rod will be level it's a lot better than the crazy upward angle that it used to be at while it was compressed um, so it's looking like so this is how the adjustment works in the 3000s is the shorter this arm is the more towed out you are the longer this arm is, the more towed in you are. So instead of having a really long tie rod, I'm gonna have to ultimately shorten this rod down to make it have adjustability uh, once this thread tap comes in. And it's actually looking like this thread, this rod is not gonna be nearly as long as what I needed it to be. So what I'm gonna do is have a little bit of toe out, cut the rod, thread the rod, and then by lengthening it, um, it'll kind of put it where I want it to be. And I want to cut the rod to have it so that fully compressed will be around the toe setting that I want to run. That way, at least on the track, so it'll be a little more towed out because then on the street, I can uh, unscrew it a little bit and zero the toe out and have a street alignment that won't chew up tires. But I want the most amount of thread engagement on each end that I can possibly get. I got the rod back off and I'm gonna shorten just a little over an inch from this 12 inch piece um, to get this thing to be towed out just a little bit and then loosening it will allow me to tow it in to set like a street alignment. So the M14 tap comes tomorrow, I believe. So I'm gonna trim this down today and tomorrow we'll get the tap in this hole and get this thing screwed on both sides. We'll be in good shape here. All right guys, so I test fitted on the, this on the car after threading the hole and um, 
I need to thread it more. The tie rod wouldn't fully uh, screw in before bottoming out. So it just needs more threads inside of this tube. I also wanna recommend using some kind of oil or cutting fluid, just some lubricant to uh, put on here so that uh, it helps keep your bits and your taps sharp. And it really helps when it comes to um, threading the holes or drilling the holes and just biting into the metal. So uh, I'm gonna get after this now and get the threads as deep as I can, and then I'll test fit it on the car. All right, guys. So as you can see, it looks to be that there's a little bit of toe out there. I don't know if that's easy to see on camera, but it'll be easier to see with the wheel on. But this guy is fully threaded in here, fully threaded in on the inside. And this guy's all tightened down. And here is where we sit. Um, I'm pretty stoked right now because it's perfect. As of right now, it's perfect. I'm gonna put the wheel on real quick, show you guys what it looks like. It's still raining here, so I'm kind of just trying to make do. But uh, yeah, that's a beefy tie rod. And let me turn in one way. You can kind of see in there, that's the inner. Tighten that up against the nut there. So I'm going to work on finishing the uh, other rod for the driver's side. And in the next video, maybe you'll see this thing on the ground, eyeball a line, taking it for a ride around the neighborhood. But I'm gonna give you a quick rundown, guys, so that you can build your own tie rods with bump steer correction and things like that for your 3000 GT and replace the thin stock style inner and outer tie rods. So the quick rundown, is that your innermost tie rod, what screws into the rack, is going to be a Moog part. And I believe it's for a Honda Odyssey in some years of the Honda Accord so that um, you can say something happens or after they wear out over time, you can still go to the parts store and buy a replacement. I'm gonna put that part number down in the description. Uh, I'm gonna put links to all this stuff down in the description as well, in case you guys wanna try your hand at this for your own car. And this will kinda go for any car. Um, I'll also include the link to the universal tie rod uh, site that Moog has. Basically, you put in the inner thread pitch for your rack and what you want the outer thread pitch to be, and it shows you all their tie rods that fall into that category. And that's how I found this Honda Odyssey one because it was the shortest available one with an M16 by 1.5 inner thread and 14 by 1.5 outer thread. So then the inner piece, where did I have that cut piece? This is my driver's side tube. This is steel DOM tubing. It is one inch outer diameter, half inch inner diameter, quarter inch wall. So that's pretty tough stuff. I'm not gonna have to worry about bending it. Then my outer is just a 5 8 time joint. It's a, uh, the thread pitch for the male part of it is 5 8 dash 18 thread, and it's a left-handed thread. So you wanna make sure your heim outer is a left-hand thread and your inner is a right-hand thread so that when you turn the rod, it either it expands or contracts. If they were both right-hand thread, it wouldn't really work like that. You would actually have to disconnect one side in order to make adjustments. The metal rod came from, I believe, Speedy Metals, and then this heim joint came from Speedway Motors. So links as well down below. Now my car, you can't really take my measurements and run with them. Uh, I would order a two foot piece of tubing so you do have enough no matter how big of a tie rod you need. Uh, you can always trim down. It's better to have too much than not enough. But I have extended lower control arms so my tie, rod, uh, tie rods are gonna be notably longer than you guys if you don't have extended uh, arms and things like that. Now all the hardware that I got for the uh, outer to connect it to the knuckle. I got it from Lowe's. So it's easy stuff to get your hands on. I will also um, explain what I got in the description down below so that you guys can make your own. Um, but with some measuring, basically finding an inner piece and getting that outer heim uh, connected to the knuckle. The rest is just finding uh, the correct length of the metal tube that you need to run and it'll give you bump steer correction And it'll give you something that's a lot tougher than the factory tie rods um, That will work better So I'm gonna throw the wheel on right now And I'll just give you guys one last look at what it looks like with the wheel on fully compressed Which would be the maximum toe out that I will be able to run 
I don't know if you guys can see, but it appears to be towed out a tiny bit. And in here, let's see if you guys look up this way, the arm appears to be perfectly straight coming out of the uh, steering rack. It's hard for you to see here, but that is exactly what you want when it comes to uh, having this offset spacer here to um, get the tie rod down. So that is on the money. All right, guys, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. The next step is going to be getting this thing on the alignment rack, getting it dialed in, and maybe making some fine adjustments to it. Um, but I'm just wrapping up some loose ends, like a new battery mount, uh, battery tie down. And yeah, so this thing is good to go. Uh, I feel really happy that I was able to make my own tie rods. And if you guys have any questions when it comes to making your own tie rods, hit me up on Instagram or leave a comment down below and uh, I'll do what I can to help you out. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, guys, and I'll see you next time.